Hi, Keshav here. Welcome back. As part of ADF and Azure Databricks video series, let's get started with the next video. All right. In this video, let's see how do we connect Azure Databricks to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 and how data loaded from the CSV file. All right. So let's get started. You know, to connect to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, majorly we need three components. That is storage account. Of course, we need storage account created, and also we need container name and also we need access key to connect to that specific storage account all right if we have these three details we can connect to storage account and have data loaded from any of the files those exist in storage account all right so first to get the connection string all right you know or to get sample connection string you can directly go to databricks official site search for docs.databricks.com under docs.databricks go to azure databricks workspace guide under Azure Databricks Workspace Guide, Spot Data Guide, under Data Guide, go to Data Sources. Within Data Sources, look for Azure Blob Storage. All right. If you go all the way down, and there you could see the sample script. All right. Yeah, here you could see Python script as well as Scala. So it's up to you, whatever you want. So I'm going to go for Python. Let me just copy and paste in my Notepad. All right within this sample script let's replace with our details and we can use that directly all right okay so what it, this script is trying to do here it is trying to create a mount point so what is mount point and why why do we need mount point all right so mount point you can say in one type of uh, masking it's it's a option through which we can mask our storage account details all right so if you don't create mount point you need to pass all the details so container name and your storage account name if you are exposing your connection string like this it won't be secured right you know instead of exposing connection string so what we can do we, we can have mount point created so through which we can hide these details and whenever we need we can reference directly mount point instead of exposing the storage account details all right so this is sample script through which we can create mount point so let's replace with our details okay what details we need to provide here under source we need to provide our container name and then storage account name all right let's go ahead and get container name and storage account name i got already azure data lake storage gen 2 account created so go to kr adls demo this is my azure data lake storage gen 2 account let me just go ahead and copy this account name all right I'll go back to notepad here we need to provide our storage account name all right fine next we need to provide container name if you go inside that account we could see the container called development all right i'm going to just copy this container name under development container we got file called prod underscore sales that says that is the file we are gonna load into azure databricks all right fine and done okay next thing the mount point name so what are the name you like and you know you can just specify that name i'm going to name it as kr demo fine and we need to provide config details as well under config key what we need to provide so whatever value we are providing that should be within double quotes all right all the way back to azure databricks again here there are the specifications given below maybe that will help us okay under config key what we need to provide can be either this or the below you know below code all right let me copy the first line i'm just copying and pasting and inside the double quotes okay here what we need to do we need to replace with our storage account name that is care adls demo this is done and next it is asking us to provide secret scope right in case if you have data vault then you can provide secret scope so in our case i don't have any data vault so let me just take this off so if you have data vault you can provide that or else just you can ignore that okay then we need to provide the key the key would be our access key that should be within double quotes all right let me go back to azure data lake storage under azure data lake storage go to access key blade under access key you could see the key one and key two you can pass any of these keys let me copy the key one and gonna paste here that's it we are ready with all all our details so now we can create mount point 
for our Azure Data Lake storage with this script. All right. I'm just copying this, and let me go ahead and launch Azure Databricks workspace. All right. Currently, Azure Databricks workspace is not launched. Let me go ahead and launch. It is signing in. It may take few seconds. Let's wait for that. So, why do we create Mount Point? Mount Point obviously it will help you to hide complete details of your storage account. All right. Azure Databricks workspace is launched. Now let's go ahead and create new notebook. Okay, before going ahead and creating a new notebook, what we need to do? We need to create the cluster. But currently we have one cluster, you know, already created and it's running too. So let me go ahead and use the existing cluster instead of creating new cluster here, because if I start creating new cluster, it might take again uh, quite few minutes. So let me go ahead and use existing cluster. All right, let me go ahead and create new notebook. I'm going to say new notebook. So I'm going to name it as care demo ADLS. All right. Fine. I'm going to go for default uh, language that is Python and the cluster which is already existing that is care demo. That's it. Let me go ahead and create. All right. So notebook is created and all right. So first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to just import required modules. So I'm going to just import PySpark. All right. And also, I'm going to import PySpark session. Okay, from PySpark. Dot SQL, import Spark session. Fine. So let me execute Spark session. All right. I think Spark session. Okay, it's PySpark. All right, required modules are imported. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy our connection string that we just created, copy and paste it over here. So, this will create mount point. All right, so invalid syntax, what happens? DB utils fs dot mount. Okay, we have got one extra parenthesis, we don't need this parenthesis. All right, that's it. Let me execute that. It might take few seconds to create mount point. All right, mount point is created. In, in case if you want to remove this mount point, what you can do, you can just write a command like this: db utils, db utils dot fs dot and mount, and we need to pass our mount point name that we just created. All right, that is this. So if you execute this command, it will take off our mount point that we just created. Again, we can go ahead and create. First, we will take up this mount point and we will create again. All right. Now, see. So, care demo has been unmounted. Okay. Again, if you want to mount, then just execute the pillar command. That is it. All right. Now, again, mount point is created. Okay. Now, the next thing is we have to load the data from the file which is there in our ADLS. The file name is product underscore sales. Let me go for that. Under development, we got file name called product sales dot csv. All right, let me copy this file name. And if you look at the data, all these are the rows in the csv file. All right, we expect all these rows to be loaded into our database. All right, now let's go back to our workspace. All right, now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just create one data frame. Df equals to spark dot read csv all right so this is a command to read the data from csv file i'm just pasting the file name here and in this case we already created mount point right so we need to give complete path now we need to provide this mount point name here all right so, you know every time we need to specify our storage account details so then as we already created mount point we just we can reference the mount point and within that location we have got product sales dot csv file all right that's it now i'm going to go for a few other options in for schema equal to true and header equal to true in for schema equal to true means what what it does when when data is loaded into our data frame the data will be created based on the data that is stored in the specific field all right it won't take i mean what are the data type that we are getting from source file it will define the new data type based on the data that is under that specific column. All right. So let me execute this. All right. 
data frame is created and also data also fully loaded ok. Let me just display the data fine display all right seems data has been loaded now it is fetching out ok. So, execute successfully and also data being loaded from our CSV file into Azure Databricks all right. So, you could see that order date, category name, product name, color, order month and then sales amount and tax amount all right. So, what are the records those were there in CSV file all the records are being loaded into our Databricks all right. Now, of course, you can go on transform this data to fit for your business requirement all right. So, that we will see in next video. So, this video is mainly to show you how to create mount point uh, for our Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 and how data loaded into Azure Databricks all right. It is very simple. We just created mount point by providing the details that is the storage account name and container name and also the access key that is it all right and we loaded the data from our CSV file just by referencing our mount point that we just created and we created one data frame all right. So, data frame is created with uh, two options that is infer schema equals to true and also header equals to true. Header equals to true says that first row will be treated as header and infer schema what it does in case if you go for you know print schema option print schema all right let us see. See here order date year it is created as integer and category name created as string because it is a string data and product name string color string order month again integer sales amount double and tax amount also double ok. This infer schema option what it does it will define the data type in your data frame based on the data that we are loading all right. This all in CSV definitely would have been in string would have been stored as text, but when we load it into data frame. So, our data data types are created accordingly based on the data that is available in that specific field all right. If you do not use infer schema see what happens all right. I am going to create a new data frame here ok. Let me create new data frame without that option all right. I am going to create a new data frame that is df1 and I am going to take off this option infer schema equals to true. Let us see what happens all right there is no any syntax error it is going to execute. Once it is executed we will we'll check the schema how the schema is all right. I am going to print the schema of data frame 1 all right. See here all the fields are created with string data type all right. In case if you want to do any sort of calculations then obviously, it would not allow because data is stored as string right. So, that is how our infer schema option works all right. Thanks for watching my video please do subscribe for more videos from my side on ADF and also Azure Databricks all right. We will meet again in next video until then bye bye thank you.